Hello grade 12s. Today we will revise probability theory from grade 10 and grade 11. Let's jump straight into it. In today's lesson, we'll revise the theory of probability and we'll be looking at the definition of independent and dependent event, the product rule for independent events, the sum rule for mutually exclusive events, the addition rule for probability, and the complementary rule for events. But before we get into all of this, let's go over the basics. In every experiment in probability, there will be more than one possible outcome. For example, if we toss a dice, there are six possible outcomes. When we find the probability of an event occurring, we are looking for the probability of getting a certain outcome from an experiment, like the probability of rolling a six when tossing the dice. There are different types of events in probability. Let's look at a few of them, starting with independent events. Independent events are not affected by previous events. This means that the outcome of the first event does not affect the probability of the other event happening. This is like tossing the same dice two times. Whatever the dice landed on in the first toss will not affect what it will land on in the second toss. To find the probability of two independent events that occur in sequence, we find the probability of each event occurring separately and then multiply the probabilities together. Two events are dependent if the outcome of the first event affects the outcome of the second. This means that the outcome of the first event will affect the possible outcomes of the second event. Think of two friends sharing a bag of 10 sweets. Five of the sweets are red and five of them are blue and thus there is an equal probability that red or blue sweets will be chosen. If the first friend takes three red sweets and eats them, she has changed the probability of her friend's choice. It is now more probable that the second friend will choose a blue sweet. The probability of drawing a red sweet changes with every sweet chosen. The total amount of sweets decreases each time and each event depends on the outcome of the previous event. Now let's move on to mutually exclusive events. Mutually exclusive events are events that cannot take place at the same time. A basic example of this is tossing a coin. There are only two outcomes to the experiment, heads and tails. These events can't happen at the same time, so they are mutually exclusive. Mutually exclusive events do not have an intersection. For example, in the following Venn diagram, the subsets A and B do not share any of the same numbers in their subsets. Both subsets A and B have unique numbers inside. Thus, we can call them mutually exclusive. Thus, to get the probability of event A and B, in other words, the probability of the two subsets sharing a number, or the intersection of the two subsets will be zero because they will have no intersection. But to get the probability of event A or B, thus the union of the two subsets, that can be calculated by adding the separate probabilities of A and of B. This formula only applies to mutually exclusive events. This can look a little confusing, so let's consider an example. A single dice is rolled. What is the probability of throwing a 2 or a 3? These two events are mutually exclusive because a 2 and 3 cannot be thrown at the same time. The formula for mutually exclusive events can be used. Thus, the probability of throwing a 2 or a 3 is 1 over 6 plus 1 over 6. This simplifies to 1 over 3. So, what happens if we want to get the probability of event A or event B if they are not mutually exclusive? Two events are not mutually exclusive if they have an intersection or if they can happen at the same time. Let's look at an example. If we have a pack of cards, all the hearts in a pack of cards are in subset 1 and then all the kings are in subset 2. These two events are not mutually exclusive because you can draw a king of hearts, which is both a king and a hearts card, so there is a possibility that the two events can happen at the same time. To find the probability of either the hearts or the kings to occur, we need to get the probability of only drawing a hearts card and then the probability of only drawing a king's card 
and then we need to subtract the intersection. As you can see, if we add the two subsets together, we've added the intersection twice. This is why we subtract the intersection from the total of the two subsets. The formula to get the probability of event A or event B can be determined by adding the probability of just event A and the probability of just event B and then subtracting the probability of A and B, which is the intersection of the two events. This we call the addition rule for probability. Let's apply this in an example. In a math class of 30 students, 17 are boys and 13 are girls. On a unit test, four boys and five girls made an A grade. If a student is chosen at random from the class, what is the probability of choosing a girl or an A student? Picking an A student, which is also a girl, is possible, thus two events are not mutually exclusive. Thus, to get the probability of choosing a girl or an A student, we can use the addition formula. According to the addition formula, the probability of choosing a girl, which is 13 out of 30, plus the probability of choosing an A candidate, which is 9 out of 30, minus the probability of choosing an A candidate, which is also a girl. This is 5 out of 30. It simplifies to 17 out of 30. Then lastly, we need to revise the complement rule, but let's first recap on what the word complement means. If we have event A, then the complement of event A is everything that is not event A. So the complement of rolling a 6 on a dice would be rolling anything other than a 6. The complement of an event is indicated by an A with an apostrophe, and it reads A dash. A dash is then seen as the complement of A. Event A and the complement of A will always add up to 1. For example, if we throw two dice, what is the probability that we will get two different numbers? There are 36 different outcomes in total, and it will take too long to list all of them. It's much easier to work with the complement of this event. If we only focus on rolling two of the same numbers, we see that there are only six outcomes. Thus, the probability of drawing two of the same numbers are 6 over 36. To get the probability of throwing different numbers, we can now use the complement rule that says the probability of different numbers is 1 minus the complement. 1 minus 6 over 36 is equal to 5 over 6. Thank you for joining us, Grade 12s. Remember that if you need more revision on this section, you can watch the Grade 10 and Grade 11 Mindset videos on probability. Also look at the tasks for this section in the Counting and Probability Tasks video. Thank you for joining us and goodbye.